Earlier this year, I showed you my entire studio and all of the gear that I use to make my videos, but gear is really only half of the equation. There's also a whole bunch of software that I use to edit all of this stuff, as well as a bunch of websites that I use to gather assets and just generally manage my entire creative process. So today I'm going to peel back the curtain on the computer side of things and show you all of that stuff. But before we do that, I just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Audio. Audio.com is one of the newer members to the music and sound effects scene, but they're growing quickly and that's for a few key reasons. First of all, the music and sound effects are really, really good. I'm actually using one of their songs in this video. Take a listen. Pretty cool, right? They also have one of the most unique pricing structures I've ever seen. They've got an annual subscription for music and sound effects, but you can also choose to get an unlimited lifetime music license or an unlimited lifetime sound effects license, meaning you pay once and you never pay again. And for those of you who are doing TV broadcast or cinema work, audio.com just released their audio pro license, which expands their usage to broadcast and cinema. Audio.com is trusted by a whole bunch of big brands like Toyota, Adidas, IBM, and more. So if you're looking for high quality music and sound effects that you can use in your videos and you only want to pay once and have unlimited downloads for life, make sure you click the link in the description and check out audio.com today. All right, so here's how we're going to do this. I am going to talk about a lot of stuff here. Everything will be linked below. Some of those links are affiliate links and they will be marked accordingly. Also, I'm not going to be time stamping every single item that I talk about instead of broken it down into sections. So we've got editing, we've got assets, we've got YouTube management, and then we've got some notable mentions that will kind of shine a light on how I share videos with clients and other people and even how I do my live stream. So let's start off with the editing side of things. First of all, video editing, you guys know already, I use DaVinci Resolve. I've been using it for about two years. I up upgraded to the studio license about a year ago. I absolutely love it. For those of you who are brand new to the channel, DaVinci Resolve is an all-in-one NLE, meaning you can do editing, you can do color grading, you can do audio, you can do effects, all of it within the same app, and I absolutely love it. I do a lot of tutorials here on the channel, so if you're not subscribed already and you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Now, when it comes to my audio-only project, Projects, which I typically only do in freelance work, I use Adobe Audition. I've been using Adobe Audition as my main DAW or digital audio workstation for quite a while now and I absolutely love it. Not only is it easy to create multi-track recordings, but it's easy to do multi-track editing. There's a ton of effects, a ton of presets that just make everything super, super simple. And it also supports VST plugins, which is really nice. For photo editing, I use a couple things. For basic photo editing, like if I'm doing a photo shoot, then I'll typically use Luminar AI because it just makes everything simple. I'm not really a photo editor except for in my family because for some reason people think that just because I own a camera, I must be a great photographer. I'm not. So I use Luminar AI to make things simple. And then for thumbnail creation, I use Photoshop. And then last on the editing side of things is creating subtitles for my videos. And for that, I use Descript. Now, subtitling is not the only feature of Descript. It's actually a full-blown editor. I did a whole review on it not too long ago. I'll make sure I link that below. Now let's move on to assets. And when I say assets, I mean things like music and sound effects, style stock footage, effects templates, stock photos, all that kind of stuff. We'll start off with music and sound effects. We already mentioned audio, which I have been using more and more lately, but I also use Artlist and Epidemic Sound. And the reason why I use all of them is simply because I like having a large selection to choose from, and I typically get bored if I stick with one website long enough. I start to feel like I've heard everything, and so I move on to another one. So I use all three of those. For stock footage, I use two websites. I use Artgrid and Storyblocks. Art
Dark Grid is great because the footage is super high quality. I also get access to the raw and log footage, which is perfect for my color grading tutorials. Also, the way that they organize their footage is super cool. Everything is part of collections, so you can actually find an entire story's worth of video clips in one collection, which makes it easy to create a cohesive sequence if that's what your video requires. Story blocks I love because they've got a lot of not only stock footage, but they have visual effects templates, they've got after Effects templates, if you use After Effects, and also if you pay a little bit more, you've got music and sound effects. You basically, it's a one-stop shop for everything that you might need. One of the other great things about Storyblocks is the fact that you can filter by resolution and frame rate. So if I only want to see shots of the beach that are in 4K and 24 frames per second, I can do that. Now, unfortunately, Storyblocks has After Effects templates, but not DaVinci Resolve templates. So for those, I go to a couple other websites, namely Motion Array and MixKit. Motion Array is great because for one monthly fee, I get access to a whole bunch of DaVinci Resolve templates and fusion macros and just a whole bunch of stuff. So that's a great resource there. MixKit is amazing because it's free and they have DaVinci Resolve templates, they have fusion macros, they've even got stock footage, music, and sound effects. You've heard me talk about them on the channel before, so I, uh, yeah, I highly recommend MixKit. So in total, that's what, like seven sites that I use to get assets for my videos. That's a lot, I never realized how much time I spent gathering assets on the internet. Anyway, let's move on to YouTube. I use four different sites to manage all my YouTube stuff. For one, we've got TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is, it's just great. It's got a whole bunch of stuff, especially if you're on the legend license like I am, cause you get things like click magnet, which will help you decide what elements will help your thumbnails perform better. It's got keyword research and SEO optimizer. You can do AB testing. There's just a, whole bunch of stuff. Now, if you want to try out TubeBuddy, there's a link in the description for a 30 day free trial of any of the paid plans. And if you're a channel member, hit me up because I can extend that trial to 90 days. Along with TubeBuddy, I use YouTube Studio, which is the analytics, the whole back end of your YouTube channel. And I use that to determine what videos are performing, what videos aren't performing and all that stuff. It's really a great resource if you learn how to read the analytics, it'll really help you grow your YouTube channel. Now for organization, determining when videos are coming out and what sponsors are sponsoring what videos, that gets a little complicated because I actually use two different apps for that. I haven't really decided on which one I like better. First of all is Notion, which a lot of people have heard of, but it's great, it's a completely flexible tool that allow you to create content calendars and video templates and all sorts of stuff. And it really, really is great, but without the templates, I'm kind of lost. It's really hard to get started from scratch. Taskade, on the other hand, which you've heard me talk about on this channel before, is super easy to get started with. It doesn't necessarily have all the features that Notion has, but it has plenty available in order to, again, create a content schedule, keep track of sponsorships. I've been using that a lot more lately, and I absolutely love it. And then some last minute notable mentions for sharing videos with sponsors or freelance clients. I use Frame.io, which is just absolutely amazing. Things upload there super fast, their preview, player is incredible. I, I just, I absolutely love Frame.io. For a long time, I was just using Google Drive and then Dropbox, but really I just couldn't find anything that compared to Frame.io. And then for live streaming, I use StreamYard. For a while I was using OBS, but it's kind of clunky. And also it's really hard if you want to have guests on your live stream. StreamYard makes everything super, super easy. It's based in the cloud, so there's nothing to download. Adding guests is really, really, really simple. It doesn't have all of the customization available in OBS, but it definitely has enough to produce a really high quality stream. And then finally we have email, which I know sounds weird, but trust me, when you start getting a ton of emails as your channel grows, it becomes really hard to keep up. Superhuman, on the other hand, makes that process really easy. I can navigate my email with shortcuts just like I would my video editing. It's 
It's great. I've actually been using Superhuman for the past few months and I've hit inbox zero every single day since I started. So if you wanna check them out, they are linked below absolutely 100% recommend them. So there you go, between all that software, all those websites and all of the gear that I showed you earlier this year, I'm able to create high quality websites in a fairly efficient manner. If you missed the video where I showed you all the gear that I used to make my videos, you can check that out right here. And for more tools, tips and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.